Okay, guys, before we proceed uh, with this uh, topic, the first thing that we have to understand is the meaning of... Um, there, there are a lot of examples in, uh, we can see in our daily life. The real um, phenomenon of uh, rheology, which uh, in, in our daily life we can see um, in the food processing, uh, in food formulation, we use this understanding about uh, rheology uh, in, in a real application. So therefore, we have to start with understanding the meaning and the definition of uh, rheology itself. So um, I still waiting, I'm still waiting for someone um, to define the standard definition of rheology. Why are you so quiet? <laughs> huh? Come on. Show that uh, you have read uh, something uh, on rheology. Yes. Your name, please. Your name? Ayn. Ayn, yeah. Ah, okay, Ayn. Please help the class. Again? The study of deformation and flow of matter. Okay. Does that make sense to you? Every word in, the, in that definition? Rheology is a study of deformation and? Or can I say rheology is a study of flow and deformation? This one is correct. Rheology is a study of deformation and flow. Is that a standard uh, textbook definition? Or if I say the other way around, rheology is a study of flow and deformation. So which one is correct? <laughs> Christopher, you are smiling. Tell me, please tell me which one is correct. The first one is rheology is a study of deformation. I said, and flow. But I say, rheology is a, is a study of flow and deformation. So which one is correct? Both. Both are correct. Oh, that's an easy way. <laughs> Both are correct. Think, think. Yeah? This course is about thinking. Remember, I'm not giving you everything in the lecture. Can I get, uh, I still can remember the name. Um, let me get some name. Where's my head model? Yeah. Where is Aziza? Aziza, you, you have not uh, uploaded your photo, so I'll give you until the end of this week. Otherwise, I will kick you out from Edmodo. Okay? Okay, by today. Okay, Aziza, can you please come forward? So this is a penalty because you have not uploaded your photo. Okay, Aziza, come on. Quick. Can you please come forward? Bagi jalan sikit dekat Aziza. Not because you're you sitting in, in the front row. As a penalty because you don't put your photo in that model. Okay? Don't worry. I'm not going to ask you to do anything silly. Don't be afraid, eh, Aziza? Okay, Aziza, I want you to pick up that uh, well, this one, maybe, the bottle. Okay? Okay, uh, and another one, both. And show to your colleague, to your friends. Okay. Now Aisha is holding on the left uh, sauce plum, and on the right is sauce chili thai. Okay, I want, to, I, I want you to make a good guess. Which one do you think is more viscous? Huh? 
uh, on the left, sauce plum, or on the right, uh, sorry, yeah, on the left, soft, sauce plum, and on the right, sauce chili thai. Left, right. Okay, how many say, how many of you say that on the left is more viscous? Sauce plum is more viscous. How many of you? I'm going to ask you why. <laughs> Only a few. You're so afraid to raise your hand. Come on. Okay. I think the minority. What about the one on the right? How many of you say this is more viscous? And some of you have not raised your hand. So I don't know what's your answer. Not sure. How do you know that this one is more viscous than the other one? Start the young. Huh? Or this one is more viscous than this one? How do you know? Don't do anything yet. <laughs> Is it from your experience or are you just guessing? Experience. Just guessing or maybe from your experience because you know previously maybe you know when you cook you use sauce plum or you use sauce chili. So maybe you can guess the relative uh, viscosity, which one is higher, which one is less viscous, which one, which one is more viscous from your experience maybe. Or maybe you just guess. But if you just look at the sauce, and Aziza, you just hold that bottle, you, 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 you cannot tell which one, which one is more viscous, right? So what do you have to do if you want to see which one is more viscous than the other one? Uh, <laughs> I think it's poor. Poor. So are you going to do that now? <laughs> I have a plate here. <laughs> we can do some experiment. And let's see, let's see which one is more viscous. Okay. This is what scientists should do. We should carry out experiments if you want to know. Go, go ahead, yes, yes. Are you shaking? Okay, that's enough. That's my sauce. My wife said, don't finish it. <laughs> what about the other one? Remember, try to observe, eh? Observe. <laughs> okay, now, quickly, can you tell which one is more viscous now? The sauce plum or the sauce chili? Are you sure? I can't really tell, actually. It looks like more or less the same viscosity, right? Okay, there are two lessons here, two important points we have to learn from this experiment, simple experiment. What are the lessons? First one. What did Aziza do just now to, 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 to see which sample or which uh, sauce is more viscous. She has to pour the sauce, right? So that's the action of pouring is actually applying a, a force. Okay? And before that, actually, she shake the sauce to make sure that it can flow. So the, the act of pouring is actually <laughs> applying force. In this case, the gravity, the source will flow due to gravity. So she apply, she applies force. That's the first point, the first lesson. What is the second lesson? What is the second lesson from this uh, experiment? The second lesson is, when I ask you which one is more viscous after this small experiment by Aziza, we are still not very sure. And I'm also still not very sure because it looks to me more or less the same, it flows more or less the same rate, the, the same ease. So it looks like both samples here have more or less the same viscosity. But some of you maybe say one is more viscous than the other. So you can see that by doing this simple experiment, we cannot really tell the actual viscosity of the sample. The measurement is quite subjective, right? 
So maybe we have to find some ways by using instrument to measure accurately the viscosity of this sample. But another point that you may notice just now, when you try to pour, it doesn't flow that readily, isn't it? This sample maybe uh, doesn't really illustrate the point, but if you find a, some a more viscous sample like tomato ketchup or tomato sauce, when you try to uh, pour, even after you, you know, uh, put it upside down like this, it still doesn't flow. So you have to apply some force or maybe more a stronger force. Or maybe sometimes you have to make sure this one is tight. <laughs> sometimes you have to tap at the back. Okay? So what is important point that I want to uh, uh, I want to make it clear here is in order to in order for, for, for any material, any sample, uh, any food in this case to start flowing, to flow, we have to apply a force. But before, the, before actually any material will start to flow, it has to first deform. So, in the, the correct definition of rheology is actually, the sequence is deformation, then only flow. So, rheology is a study of deformation and flow. Deformation comes first, then only flow. Okay? So, thank you very much, Aliza. So, I expect you to upload your photo after the lecture or maybe before the end of this week. Okay, but let, let's uh, look at another, uh, after this uh, small experiment, another thing that you may observe on the plate, this, the, the sauce actually spread. Yeah, the sauce actually spread on the plate. But the amount of spreading is different. Now we can say, uh, we, we, uh, another observation from this small experiment, this one looks like uh, it spreads more than this one. Let, let's assume that the amount of sample that she poured just now more, more or less the same, but obvi obviously this is actually less. But uh, assume that, assuming that um, uh, the, uh, the amount poured on this plate is the same, then we can look at the spread of the sample yeah, this one is spread more. This one spread less. So maybe we can deduce, we can deduce from this that this one has a lower viscosity than this one because this one spread more compared to this one. So these are empirical way or a simple way if we can do, uh, we can uh, evaluate the viscosity of of a sample, but. Um, Again, the subject of rheology is about the flow, the flow behavior, how the materials flow under when, when, the, when the material is subjected to a force. So you must apply a force, at least in the form of gravity. But in most cases, we can apply what we call external force. Just now, when we pour or when we shake, that is actually uh, one example of external force. Okay? Then only we can deform something. Something that is uh, like this plate. Flexible. If I hold like this, nothing happened. But if I apply a force, oops, <laughs> okay, ah, you can see, okay. So we apply a force, then it start to move. If I apply this kind of force, it start to change, change the shape. Changing the shape is actually a change in dimension. So that is what the, that is the meaning of deformation. A simple way to to understand about deformation. 
deformation in in bahasa we say macam berubah bentuk kan so when when the shape change because we apply external force so that is deformation okay but when we release the force if if the material is flexible enough then it will go will come back to the original shape okay uh, if we apply this, the force within the elastic limit then we release the force, it will come back to the shape. Just like rubber band, uh, maybe from your experience, you have rubber band, stretch the rubber band, release it, it come back to the original shape, right? Stretch again, more and more and more, and you release it, maybe it won't come back to the original shape because you have applied the force exceeding the elastic limit of that material. But for a solid, or something looks like solid, when you apply a force, maybe it will deform, but you don't see uh, the solid flow. You don't see the, the solid start to flow. But when something like a liquid, like this, yeah, only very little force, we can see the water actually move easily yeah uh, if we just pour and it will flow readily easily so when we apply deformation to a liquid sample when we say liquid we, we will put in the inverted comma because um, later when you learn about when we learn about viscoelastic elasticity then we, we we know that actually any material can behave like a solid or can behave like a liquid. It depends on the uh, force that we apply and also the time. Yeah, there are many factors. But of course, now it looks like a liquid. When we apply a force in the form uh, for liquid, it can flow easily. So we, it will deform and flow. So the final results of the application of external force is actually flow for a liquid or maybe for a solid it will just deform and maybe it will come back to the original shape if the amount of applied force does not exceed the elastic limit of that solid material okay so very important point today that you have to remember we can uh, we can initiate flow if we apply external force sufficient to deform the material and to start the flow okay i'll give you another example this can you guess what is what is this honey do you like honey you don't like yeah. this honey is um, some honey is very viscous this this particular one is not that viscous but still can see when you sort of uh, move the bottle what I'm doing now is actually I'm applying force okay I'm applying a force and it already start to sort of deform maybe flow okay what is another way of, of applying a force Apart from shaking and uh, apart from shaking, what is another way of applying force? I can use something like a spoon here, right? Okay, I can just scoop it, and that is one way of applying force. And when I put and when I dip the spoon in the in the honey, actually I can feel feel. Okay, when I dip the spoon in the honey I can feel uh, whether the honey is viscous or very viscous or not so viscous and even more even better if I want to find more information about the viscosity of the honey what should I do hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Simple experiment. 
when we put in the mouth and we try to fill the sample so what is the term that we use to describe that hmm. you see something just now mouth fill mouth fill but it's just the feel you can just estimate or guesstimate still you cannot tell me what is the viscosity right you can say uh, i think it's quite viscous quite viscous i think it's very thick very viscous i think it's no this one is not very viscous so it's just ranking you know it's not accurate so later in this topic we will learn about some of the instruments that we can use to give an objective objective measurement about the rheological properties about the viscosity of a sample we can give numbers we can give figures okay now actually we can see the phenomena of the phenomenon of uh, rheology or the various phenomena okay phenomenon is singular. phenomena is plural so we can see the various phenomena of rheology which is the flow behavior of a material around us in our daily life we experience actually but without thinking that oh this is rheology of course but now when we learn about rheology then maybe you should should start to analyze every single thing that you do and how rheology applies so rheology in daily life we normally take for granted a lot of things in life and this includes some of the rheological event, events the pictures show the different roles of rheology in food and and also non food product okay yeah um remember just now when we did a simple experiment in order to uh have some idea about the viscosity of the sample we have to pour we have to shake yeah or put in the mouth uh can you can you think of other ways so when when we did that actually we apply external force right okay but can you think of other ways how we can apply external force shake is one pour is another one sorry squeeze yeah squeeze that's what you do every day right when you want to uh, put the toothpaste on your on the toothbrush can you just put the thing and uh, just wait until it start to flow you'll spend hours in the bathroom <laughs> nothing happen you have to squeeze it slowly right so that is actually a control application of force you did you did you, you you don't simply right you have to so that is a control application of force the difference between uh, control application of force and uncontrolled application of force squeezing pouring shaking what are other ways of applying the force ha huh. <laughs> stirring is now scooping what else think about now on the bigger scale in the processing food processing uh, situation in the factory or at home come on wake up wake up hmm sorry spraying yeah spraying what else 
in the in the factory. Ah, pumping to get from this point or from the tank to the uh, to the other point in the processing line, we have to pump from one point to another point, go through the pipeline, right? By using pump. So pumping, that is one way of applying force. How do you, uh, you want to prepare your toast? Uh, yeah. You put a jam or spread, and what do you do? You spread it, right. That's also applying one form of external force. What about this one? Stirring, right? Or mixing. So stirring, usually we say when we say stirring, you use a, some uh, like a spoon or something to stir. But if you use uh, something like high speed mixer, so there's a mixing process by using the mixer, by using the pedal to mix. So now, uh, can think of other example, okay? How we can apply external force. Now think about also when uh, just now when we pour, we do it, and the sample will flow, usually under the influence of gravity. But of course, if we just so we have a gravity as well as how fast you shake or you um, tap the bottle. Um, what about, imagine that uh, just now we pour on the plate, and after that we just leave it there for the sample to spread. What is the, 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 the sample actually spread under the influence of what? Gravity, as well as its own weight. Okay. But imagine that if the sample flows under the, under the influence of gravity and it, compare that with sh uh, shaking the bottle. In terms of the rate, the flow rate, because, let, let's say for now we, we, uh, in terms of how fast the sample will flow. So when we say how fast, it's actually the factor of time here, the rate. Under the influence of gravity and under the influence of uh, vigorous shaking, which one uh, actually uh, will have will cause the sample to flow faster? Gravity or shaking? Just now, shaking. So uh, when later when we l look at the definition of viscosity and how of, and and how we measure viscosity, uh, not only we look at the force that we apply but we also look at the rate, the sample flow, the samples, the sample flows, okay? Now, we have defined, and hopefully you understand the meaning of rheology, which is a science of deformation, the study of deformation and flow. There are two more important terms that we have to understand when we learn about rheology. Don't worry about the, all the complex mathematic, mathematical equations, but at least you need to understand these two terms. One is stress, another one is strain or shear rate. Okay. All this while, um, until now, we talk about applying external force. Okay, but uh, in rheology, actually, we don't we don't actually use uh, the the term force. We prefer to use the term stress. What's the difference between force and stress? Did I ask you to read the notes or the article? So I'm sure, I'm sure you have, uh, you have uh, come across this term, right? Christopher, can you come forward? 
don't worry, I'm not going to ask you a question. But even if I ask you a question, you can answer, right? It is a smart no. student. No. <laughs> I call Christopher forward here, in front here, because uh, he has a, well, bigger, big, he's bigger than me, right? Okay, small experiment, Christopher. Okay? Now, on my right, lah, because my, my right hand is stronger. <laughs> I want to apply a force. Yeah. Uh, okay. Let Let's say I apply a force ten newton. Ten newton. <laughs> okay. That is ten newton. Okay. How do you feel? Okay. Eh? No problem. Yeah. Ten. Ten newton. And now I'm going to apply the same. 10 Newton, but okay, uh, using this one. Same 10 Newton, okay. So which one? Which one? Uh, which uh, just now? This one and this one. Which one you feel higher intensity? The smaller. This okay. this one, right? So this. Uh, simple and uh, silly demonstration but you get the idea if you talk about force if I apply 10 Newton force with this surface area and 10 Newton force with a much smaller surface area so 10 Newton force is to F let's say we use the symbol F for force but the surface area, the foot, the, this one is bigger, this one is smaller, F divided by A. By using this one, the value is higher. The intensity force is higher, right? When F divided by a smaller value, the first one is bigger, the second one is higher. Okay, thank you, Christopher. Right. So, so, in rheology, actually, we use the term stress, which is the intensity of force. How strong is the force that we apply? We divide by the surface area. F divided by A. So we talk about stress in rheology, not force. Because we normalize the force. Yeah, the term normalize, normalizing, normalizing mean, means we divide by whatever. The surface area, the length, yeah, so that we can calculate the force in Newton per the square, the, the, the square of the surface area. In this case, maybe meter square. So force divide uh, Newton, force divide by meter square. Force uh, Newton per meter square. That is stress. So we apply stress. From now onwards, we say we apply external, uh, we, uh, we apply stress. We apply external force, divide by the surface area where we apply that force. So that is the stress. What happens when we apply the stress? The material will deform. Will deform. So Im imagine like a, a, a plasticine, yeah? or something that is like, like a flexible uh, ball or something. If you squeeze it with your hand, it will deform. Yeah? But some, uh, for, for a material like a liquid, when you apply the stress, it will start to flow. So deformation, but if we, if we take time as a, another factor, how fast it deforms, how fast it flows. So now we, have the, we, we define another term which is, which is called strain. Or for a liquid, uh, for for a, for a solid or semi-solid material, the deformation of solid or semi-solid material will cause the application of stress will cause strain. For a liquid, the application of stress will cause the liquid to flow, and we talk about shear rate, because in most cases we apply the force or we apply the stress in the shear mode. Okay, the shear mode. So we talk about shear stress. So 
later uh, when we define viscosity, it's actually a, the relationship between stress and strain or stress and shear rate. For liquid, we talk about shear rate. For liquid, we talk about strain rate or strain. Is that clear? Okay. Again, we apply external force, but we divide that by the surface area where we apply the force. So F divided by A. Then we have the term stress. The unit is Newton per meter square or Pascal, PA. Okay? Then after that, we'll cause deformation. For solid material, we talk about strain or strain rate. For liquid material, we talk about shear rate. Okay? So these are the everyday uh, in our everyday life that what we see in in our uh, in in uh, you know um, in when in the food processing or in at home when we use when we uh, want to eat the food we squeeze we spread we mix okay so don't worry don't 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 be afraid about rheology it's a, just a subject that um, describe about flow and we encounter rheology in our daily life. Rheology in action. Yeah, just now uh, Aziza has demonstrated nicely. Yeah. So how do you like the source to flow? Liquid food products should be formulated to display desired rheological behavior. So that's the job of food technologies. When we formulate the food, we think about what are the ingredients we want to use. What are the function of that ingredients? For example, if we add starch, or if we add hydrocolloid, it will give viscosity. It will give a thickening property. It will thicken. It will make the product viscous. Different types of hydrocolloids, different types of starch, modified starch, will give different viscosity. And therefore, the product will flow differently. So it's all about flow behavior. Yeah. So the flow behavior depends on how we formulate. So a liquid like juice like this one will flow easily, readily. A more viscous like chocolate milk will flow, but maybe not as readily as, uh, say, a fruit juice. So when we formulate the product, when, when, the, when the consumer drink through a straw and so on, so again, how we formulate the product, the, the rheological property, the, 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 the viscosity of the material will flow, uh, will, 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 will influence the organoleptic, the mouthfeel property. Yeah? Like this yogurt is thicker. <coughs> um, but imagine if, if the yogurt is very thick and you put it in the mouth and it's still remain thick in the mouth and even if you want to swallow if you want to swallow it still remain thick that is not desirable right so you want the yogurt thick in the container but when you put in the mouth and you mix with your saliva and, and so on you want the viscosity to start to reduce so that you can swallow it easily so later we will see the the one of the uh, the type of the, the different types of flow behavior. Maybe you have read in the lecture, in the lecture note, the shear thinning property. Yeah, when you apply the shear, when you uh, chew or bite and chew the, the product, actually that is what that, that is the application also of uh, external force. Yeah, chewing, masticating. Uh, swallowing, even the swal swallowing, when we swallow, actually we, are, we also apply external force. We apply stress. So in this case, some material will reduce in viscosity when you apply the stress. When, uh, when, we, when, when you apply the stress and the sh when the, the shear rate increase, the viscosity will decrease. So for food, uh, uh, in most cases, we want the, the viscosity to decrease. So this type of behavior is called shear thinning behavior or pseudo plasticity behavior. 
So rheology principles are operating in these pictures. Rheology aims at measuring those properties of materials that control gain, deformation, and flow when subjected to external force, pouring, sucking, scooping, etc. Rheologically pleasant. Yeah? So if we understand about rheology, especially uh, for liquid food, we talk about viscosity. Liquid or semi-solid food, we talk about viscosity of the sample. For solid food, in the second part of this topic, we, we, we learn about texture. So for, for solid food, usually we talk about the texture, the hardness, the softness. For liquid food, we talk about viscosity. So if we, if we understand viscosity, and we, if you understand uh, when, you in, when you learn food ingredients, you know what kind of ingredients can give viscosity, can have a shear thinning property, and so on. So you will formulate, you will choose the ingredients, the combination of ingredients to formulate the product so that the product will have a pleasant sensory organoleptic property, a pleasant mouthfeel when we put in the mouth. Okay? So that's the meaning of rheologically pleasant, thick and creamy, yeah? because such rheological properties are more pleasing to the eye and mouth. Rheologically balanced. Uh, I, I have not seen this product in the market nowadays. Maybe uh, not very popular, but a few years ago, we can find this in uh, our supermarket. So it's actually a jelly drink. Have you, have you, have you tried this? No? Now you don't see this in the supermarket, yeah? But maybe in different form, I don't know. But these are actually a particle or a fruit bits. It's actually a gel of fruit, fruit bits. And it is suspended in this liquid. Yeah? It doesn't actually precipitate or you know uh, down here. So it just suspended there. How do you formulate such product? Ah, it actually this is actually a clever manipulation of rheological property to control the viscosity of the liquid or we call it continuous phase and the, the gel or the fruit bits are the dispersed phase yeah? and we control the viscosity of the continuous phase to match to match the density of the fruit bits. So by using, by applying uh, a stock, uh, stock law, hukum stock. Yeah? Pernah dengar hukum stock? Tak apa, let you go back, you Google uh, stock, S-T-O-K-E, stock's law. So we can actually balance between the density of the particle and the viscosity of the surrounding liquid. Okay, so we can balance the if the effect of uh, gravity. In this case, the gra the gravity is actually is trying to pull down the gel bit or the fruit bit. So this is actually balanced up by the liquid, the surrounding liquid or the continuous phase. Uh, in this case, they use actually a combination of hydrocolloids. One of, it's actually, uh, of course, a secret of the company, but one of the hydrocolloids they use is actually start with X. What? Zan? Zantan gum. It's actually a pat patented in Canada. Yeah? It's a clever manipulation of science principle, physical principle. Yeah? So again, we talk about biology. Yeah? So I guess uh, we have to uh, stop here. But um, announcement for this 
for this course on Thursday. It's another slot, right?